to me, those are your two options. The hallway is not an option. <laughs> Amen. I hear tell sometimes we have people that just roam the hallways. I can't believe it. But it's not you, because you're in here with me now. <laughs> All righty. How many of you know password? The word, the game. Oh, okay. I know the password. I'm sorry. How many of you know the game called Password? What was that man's name way back in the day? That Alan Hud. London, I'm sorry. Check with Sandra. She knows who he is. <laughs> but folks, you remember that game where it was like a, a um, word association. And you would say a word and you, your partner had to try to guess what the word was that all the audience knew because it was shining somewhere. Um, so if the, if, uh, if, uh, if, the, if the word, you know, if I said hot, most of you probably say cold, right? Right. If I said um, big, small, little, right? Some association. If I said, um, if I said chicken, fried, okay. <laughs> Right. Just don't <laughs> don't say your spouse's name. <laughs> um, and, and it was always funny, you know. But but most of the time, it, you know, you could follow what the association was. Okay, I I I'm going to try to change uh, an association of of a name that you have. Because I have discovered that most people don't know the uh, correct biblical answer. But if I were to say to you, and I, and I want you to go ahead and shout back to me, because I got a feeling, I know what you, okay? If I said to you, Ebenezer, <laughs> come on now, if you weren't in church and I hadn't told you, you know, there's a biblical thing, you, if I said Ebenezer, you would go Scrooge. From the famous Christmas Carol, right? And I enjoy watching that. I don't have a problem with it. And I, I like the way it ends, you know. And um, but you guys, I want to read from First Samuel chapter seven. And I kid you not, I'm gonna keep repeating myself because I've this time of year, I get invited, and, I, and it's an honor to individual uh, celebrations. And sometimes I get asked to pray or just say a couple words beforehand or something. And invariably I find myself wanting to talk about Ebenezer. Okay? So my hope, and I'm going to keep doing it until most, until most of you respond differently. So that when you hear Ebenezer, I don't care where you hear it, you'll think, oh, stone of help. that it'll become the new response for you. And I'm going to read to you a very simple story. You don't have to know a lot of Bible background to get the story. Just listen to it. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 10, excuse me, chapter 7, verse 10. While Samuel, Samuel is a prophet. It's the person that this book is named after. He's a, a, a famous prophet of, uh, uh, in Israel's history. While Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to engage Israel in battle. How many of you understand that part? Okay. That while Samuel is leading people of Israel in some type of worship, all of a sudden um, uh, there is a gathering uh, uh, to engage them in battle from this group of people known as Philistines. And um, the Philistines are mentioned many times throughout the Old Testament. But that day, the Lord thundered with loud thunder against the Philistines. 
Folks, we're not quite sure exactly what that involved. Sounds like it might have involved actual thunder. But it's definitely some way of portraying God's intervention in a powerful way. Right, folks? Because God uh, has a variety of ways in which he can intervene. You know, sometimes it's real quiet. Sometimes just a whisper in the middle of the night. But there's other times when his power is even more evident. Here it is described as he thundered with loud thunder. And threw them, the Philistines, into such a panic that they were routed before the Israelites. So folks, the way that God manifested, it results in a victory on a national scale. I mean, this is big. This is a nation, Israel, against a neighboring uh, 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 group of, of, of people. And it's, a, it's, a, it's big. It's a battle. But it is one in the which the Israelites routed the Philistines. The men of Israel rushed out of Mizpah, a nearby city, and pursued the Philistines. So the battle is going in such a way that the Philistines are running and, and there's people joining in the battle from the neighboring uh, you know, uh, cities because the enemy is on the run. And, um, uh, you know, um, we, we'll still do that. You, you'll see, you get, you get uh, something going in a certain direction, you'll get people joining in. Maybe they weren't too interested in, in joining in initially, but now that they see how it's going and it's going well, hey, they'll, they'll be happy to join in. Okay. And they pursued the Philistines, slaughtering them along the way to a point below Bethkar. How many have followed that story? Okay. What did the rest of you do with it? <laughs> How many of you are confused, uh, the, you know, because you don't know your Bible that well? And you're, you're confused. Now, folks, this is just a story about on a certain day that Israelites who were associated with God and a battle from their enemies, and uh, uh, God shows up that day in a very special way. And the battle turns quickly, and they're, they are winning and um, uh, to the point that they're chasing. And uh, says in verse 12, and this is where I want you to really uh, stay with me. Then Samuel took a stone, the prophet guy, the one who was trying to lead in worship, you know, before this attack, took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen, a name of another locale. He named it Ebenezer. Saying, and this is important, saying, thus far the Lord has helped us. And for those of you that, you know, in your Bibles, uh, you know, you, you have footnotes or something, I guarantee you, if you have a study Bible of some sort, that by the name of Ebenezer, you have some kind of marking that takes you to your footnotes. And in your footnotes, you will see that a literal translation of that name, Ebenezer, means stone of help. Because they chose that day the way it all played out. It was so evident to them that God had shown up. That God had intervened. That God was present. It was so evident to them that they wanted to mark it. And they took a stone of some kind as we are wont to do because stones last long and they set it up and they said this is Ebenezer and it was meant to serve as a reminder 
Correct? Okay. You guys, let me make three quick points because um, I want to make sure. Uh, uh, you know, I'm talking to uh, our, the graduates. Um, raise your hand if you're an identified graduate today. Raise your hand if you're an identified graduate today. Raise your hand high if you're an identified <laughs> graduate. Yes. Okay, right. Those folks that were up here. <laughs> All right. You guys are identified grad. We kind of marked you at your graduation ceremony. That's all they're, that's what they're doing, right? They're marking the fact that you have made it. Okay. But all of us are graduates in the sense of the definite marked intervals. If you're willing to mark things where there's been increased levels and steps and, and degrees, maybe not the formal diploma degree thing that we think of, but uh, you guys, every day is a graduation. It can be if you'll, if you'll see it that way. No, no lie, every new day is the, 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 the beginning of the rest of your life. It is different. It is, and it's important for us to have these occasions where we very pointedly mark things. Three points to ponder from this little story regarding Ebenezer and the stone of help. Number one is the Philistines themselves. Uh, the reason every day you can be a graduate is because every day will confront you with something challenging. Amen. It, it, isn't that about the truth? Now, the degree of it sometimes varies, and, and, and you know, hands down. Some days are it's much more severe than other days. But I can almost guarantee you that every day uh, there is some kind of a test in your life. Amen. I, 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 yeah, young people, um, uh, you know, all those that were up here, uh, uh, they know because they, they, they have marked that they're done with that process. But they can look back and remember many a days of testing. Is that right? Whether it was in high school, whether it was in college, or whether it was at the workplace. Or whether it will be even into retirement. The challenge of the Philistines is continual. In the Old Testament, I can't believe how many times they show up. It's almost like, how many of these guys are there? <laughs> but you guys, to some degree, they represent uh, 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 a, a, the spiritual challenge of the nation of Israel. And from, uh, from uh, early on, all the way through the rest of this uh, Old Testament, the Philistines keep showing up. They get routed at different times. Sometimes they appear to win. But the one thing that is constant is that they show up. I, I, I've thought about, uh, you know, spiritually speaking, you guys, we do have an enemy. and His name is Satan. And when he showed up in the book of Job and God said, well, where you've been? How many know how Satan responded? He said, I've been to and fro. <laughs> I've been to and fro on the earth. Folks, this is his domain. And uh, I, I want you to know something. And this is a positive. Unfortunately, the ends uh, usually are negative. But at least a positive is Satan's diligence. You've got to give Satan credit. For always being on the job. You might not like the job he's doing on your life, but you got to acknowledge he's willing to show up every day. And, and you can beat him. Amen. And, and you, know, you can have the, 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 the you can win the, that battle. But I, let, me, let me tell you something. He will show up again. Doesn't mean that you didn't defeat him. It is just a credit to his 
diligence. And I will say this to anyone um, because in the life of, of God in the flesh, whom we call Jesus, at the very beginning of his ministry, Jesus went out into a wilderness for 40 days. Where the Bible says that he is tempted or tested of Satan at the very beginning, right? How many familiar? So, oh. and, 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 and he'll confront Satan with the word of God. And it'll say that Satan leaves him. And the angels will come and minister to him. But the one uh, um, uh, recollection in the book of Luke, and you can look it up, uh, we're not going to flash it right now, chapter 4 and verse 13. It will say something to this effect that Satan left him for a season. Modern translations will say until another opportune time. Folks, so you will never become so spiritual. You'll never become so good that, as, that you'll be off limits to Satan. And if nothing, give him credit for his diligence. He, I guarantee you, he will show up again. I don't like it. But it, it helps me not to be floored. Um... Satan is, it has this to and fro activity level. Um, even Jesus was subject to the continual testing. Uh, I graduated, uh, okay, uh, in 1977. <laughs> Don't seem like that long ago, to, but some pe people go, what? 77? <laughs> um, but I've realized ever since that I'm still in school. I mean, I graduated from Westchester State College in, in 1983. But I've been in school ever since. Amen. I attend the famous university of Hard Knocks. <laughs> How many of you are still in school? The famous university of Hard Knocks called Life. Life every day brings us challenges, brings us testings. Someone said that life is a different kind of teacher because it likes to give you the test first, the lesson afterwards. That's true too, isn't it? The test first, the lesson afterwards. But one thing is guaranteed, you guys, and that is that Satan will keep showing up. And it's not reflective that you're not spiritual. It's just reflective that he, he's diligent about his job. And as long as you're a part of this earth, this is his realm, and he'll keep showing up in one form or another. So don't be so surprised. Matter of fact, why don't you anticipate? Why don't you maybe wake up in the morning and say, oh God, lead me not into temptation today because Satan is after me. Not, not to paralyze yourself, but to begin to arm yourself. Amen. Anticipate. That he's going to show up. Point number two is it's good to mark our victory sites. See, Ebenezer is a marked victory site. Every one of these graduates, whether it was retirement, high school, college, uh, masters, whatever, it is a marked site. And it's important to mark. Because uh, you get to celebrate. I know that if I were to have asked, and I, uh, just for the sake of time, I didn't. But if I, I was going to ask, hey, man, how did you make it? How did you make it? Because, you know, you, um, there, there were times when, when you knew you weren't ready. When you were running out of time. Um, how did you make it? Most of us will say God's grace. God's strength. 
God's mercy, God's patience, God's goodness. Folks, it's important for us to be clear about that because then we can mark God's victory. That's why the stone was named the way it was. They named it Ebenezer, saying, thus far, God has helped us. He is my stone of help. Put an actual stone there to help me remember this. Mark it for me. And point number three is simply this. The importance of marking yesterday's victories is that you might remember in the face of tomorrow's challenges. And today is yesterday's tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, it's just daily. To our, to our young people, to our retirees, because you're in the same boat. You're just a little farther along in your journey, that's all. But it's, it continues being the same journey. You guys, may all of us have our Ebenezer's clearly marked. Because that, that, that plays a big part of it. In some people's outlook and mentality, they forget how they've gotten to where they've gotten. And I can tell you now that all of you, myself included, have gotten this far, thus far, because God has helped me. How did I make it to be a 60-year-old man? God has helped me. <laughs> How am I going to make it to 61? Hmm. Hmm. God is going to help me. <laughs> hey, amen. I remember being in high school. And, and uh, matter of fact, I remember being 16, I've mentioned this before, being 16 and on my way to Westchester where we used to take our driver's test and, and uh, uh, on, the, on Route 52 right around Longwood when the nerves started kicking in. And, and, and I, I was praying and, and saying, Lord, if you will help me to pass this test, I'll never ask you for anything again. <laughs> Now, don't laugh at me too much because you prayed the same thing. <laughs> Amen. There was that, that test that you should have read those six chapters for, and now it's the last night, and you're just now reading chapter one. <laughs> and you're going, oh, God, have mercy. <laughs> Every graduate goes through that experience. And, and you know what? The number of times that God has mercy on us. And helps us when we really don't deserve it. But it is his goodness. And folks, you ought to mark that. I don't know how I did that except to say thank you, God. Thus far has the Lord helped me. And if you'll mark it, you guys, you'll have an Ebenezer stone to help you with today's new situation with today's new attack and tomorrow's because all of us are also the same in this regard. We want our last test to be our, la our last test. <laughs> we want that last test to be definitely the, at least the hardest one that we'll ever face. I've got news for you. Your hardest test lies somewhere ahead of you. It does. I want to rejoice I, you know, I, I look at Peggy, and I had the privilege of, of being at the hospital for quite a few uh, procedures and getting to know the family and getting to know Peggy, who sits back there with her daughter Monica just faithfully for the last four or five years and, and smiles a lot at me and, and uh, is kind of quiet. And um, folks, she, she had to face a test that I've not yet faced. You know, the one where you transition from this life to the next. 
And I marveled at how God helped her. Uh, but that's what my God does. I don't know why we act so surprised sometimes. I don't know why we fret so. I'm afraid that it may be we're not marking the Ebenezer moments enough. Let me close with Hebrews uh, chapter 12. And uh, folks, and I, I want you to, to encourage one another as, you know, as, as we pray and dismiss, um, whether it be because of these beautiful young people moving on from, from high school or some of our other that have finished college. Again, make sure you catch Diane and say congratulations to her, uh, Harry. Um, but, you know, I, I read uh, to you in, from Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, so it's connected to something that's been said already. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. The great cloud of witnesses is from the previous chapter, what we call the Old Testament heroes of the faith. It describes how they made it. And how they made it was by faith in God. And it's saying that, in a sense, it's, it's, it's making them memorials to the present generation. Consider them. See how many, see how great a cloud of witnesses have made it. Folks, I want to acknowledge Peggy has made it. She died in faith in Christ Jesus. Hence, death is not uh, a defeat. It is simply a graduation, <laughs> Monica. Amen. Amen. And now she joins that great cloud of witnesses. And the older I've gotten, I've realized, oh my goodness, there's a whole lot more of us on the other side than there are here. Right? Think about it. Think about how great a cloud of witnesses. It's been over 2,000 years of people of faith in Christ Jesus. And with each person that you know that graduates in that ultimate graduation, <laughs> they join the great cloud. Since we're surrounded, this is a fact, by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on Jesus so folks I just want to invite us all to um, acknowledge the Philistines are going to keep coming um, uh, uh, it's good to mark our victory sites because it's going to give us hope about our current problem Because ultimately what we need to do, and this is what every one of the graduates did, you persevered. That's the word. You stuck to it. You did not quit. You may have felt like it. And maybe you did quit and then you got back in. <laughs> I don't know. But the bottom line is we celebrate you today because you know what? The most important thing is to the glory of God, you made it. So how am I going to make it today? And oh man, when I think about tomorrow's situations, well, you know what? Check out Ebenezer, <laughs> the stone of help. It's how you made it thus far. Thus far has God helped us. And if he's helped you this far, folks, his promise is to keep helping us. Amen. Let us stand. Hallelujah.